Hi everybody, this is Night All Fibers, a crafting podcast. This is my mom, Brenda. This is my daughter, Rachel. Today is April 8th, 2024, and we are so excited to be here. It is episode 100. Hey, And we put together a giveaway for episode 100 because it's just exciting. We've been putting up about one podcast a month. Mm -hmm. And that's been really nice because then our knitting feels a little more organic and we have time to build up what yeah. we've done and show it off. So, And hopefully have different things each episode yeah. rather than just the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, welcome to all new and returning viewers. We are so excited to have you spend some mm -hmm. of your precious time sitting and crafting with us. Uh, we don't do show notes. However, we do love connecting with you via the comments so please comment below and yeah. anything that you have questions about during the episode or anything you just want to chat about in the comments mm -hmm. we'd love to spend that time down there and yeah I hope everybody else has had a good crafting month yeah and a um, very happy Easter if you celebrate yes. it it was a really nice Easter for us yes it was it okay. was okay so I think Stay tuned to the end so you know how mm -hmm. to enter for the giveaway. And we'll show off what the giveaway is yes. then. And I think we're going to start with stitch all stitch, stitch together. together. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Yes. Okay, I have one, two, three things. I have three things as well. Okay. And I think one of them will be a bit of a surprise. So, do you want to start with... I can. Yeah, I'll let you start. I finished my Madewell sweater. It yeah. looks so good. It's blocked it fits and really ends well. I'll stand up. In. Stand up. Um, you can't yeah. really see much when you stand up, but we can definitely add in a picture. Boop. There we go. The sleeves um, are kind of bracelet, bracelet length, which is perfect because I don't have that extra... Bulk. bulk right where my watch band is so yeah. I love it I was talking last time about doing balloon sleeves and I didn't I de did do decreases on my sleeves they mm -hmm. fit perfectly you modified I... the sleeve pattern by knitting a little more stocking net before you started decreasing yes because I have really large um your arms are arms full. they're very full I have my grandmother's mm -hmm. My grandmother's arms. It just means they're stronger. <laughs> There's just more to hug. <laughs> uh, this is what I had left of my 300 grams. Mm -hmm. I have a 50 gram that I never touched. This is Stunning String Meerkat, mm -hmm. and it is their just 75 25 base. So I used, I have maybe 40 some grams of the last, the third 100. So you gram. had 300 and you think this is 40. 40, yes. So I maybe used 260 grams for this sweater. That sounds about right. And yeah. prior to blocking it, it was sitting pretty high up on your torso. It was, and it wasn't. Hips. I couldn't do this with it. You couldn't pull it around as close on the but front. But it blocked out beautifully. Yeah, so with that yarn, you knew there was going to be a significant amount of growth. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. definitely you accounted for that when you knit it. Yeah. So I have a uh, yarn for a little small project. I have another 50 mm -hmm. gram that I could use for socks to add a different color for yeah. heels, tufts, and toes. Yeah. Toes. Um, so yeah, uh, that worked out perfect. And I am thrilled. I finished it before Easter, so I was able to wear yeah. it to church services for Easter because the AC always makes me chilly yes um i'm really happy i finished mm -hmm. it i met my goal i was like 20 rows a day you did make sure that you like took a little extra time to get caught up if you missed a day right or something and like i that. made sure to factor in blocking and mm -hmm. the dry time to be able to wear it yes like you were mm -hmm. focused on getting I was. it done the one thing that has really helped me with my crafting this year is when i'm designing socks to mm -hmm. I have a bullet journal that Rachel helped me get set up. So I yeah. have a page where I put crafting goals. Mm -hmm. And then each day I figure out, okay, how many rows or repeats do I have to do per day to have this like sock design finished by the date you by want. By the date I want. And so I did that mm -hmm. with this sweater and the pair of socks that I'm going to show in a little bit. Awesome. Um, to be able to release my newest pattern. 
which I'll talk about later. Okay. Your turn. I finished a pair of socks with some help because <laughs> I ran out of yarn. You did. So this is the second sock. The first one is right here. So they look the exact same like I didn't need extra yarn because you had a 50 gram of the exact same colorway. I did. This is a Regia Arnie and Carlos. I think it's night sky color. It's so Nordic. It's so yeah. pretty. I just love it. I had, I think if I'm accurate, this little pop tart is That's at where the you cuff. Were. So I think I was at the cuff last episode. Now I've been really bad about moving progress keepers on this <laughs> pair of socks specifically. <laughs> so I can't promise that all of it was. I think Knit when we then. were podcasting last time, all you had to do on this one was Kitchener yes. four stitches. Or maybe I did the cuff because I did all my cuffs. Anyway, oh, no. the pop tarts on the cuff. Where did you run out of yarn? That's what... Let me pull it inside out and look where the ends are because I'm going to be weaving in before She's, I start on a new one. She was like... Hey, I, was, I wove in already. Oh, you did? Yeah, but I can Good feel it. Good for you. <laughs> I needed this much more yarn. The dark stripe right here is where I ran out, so I needed a good bit. She was just going to use a plain color and knit the rest of it that in plain color. That is when I thought I was only going to be like right here. Yeah. Right here is where I thought I would run out. But I'm like, Rachel, just take my yarn that I have and use it. And you Whatever said you, you would put some in a blank, whatever was left in a blank. I'm just going to start, I'm going to start going, Bleh. I can't talk today. I am going to start another Opal Regia mm -hmm. commercially. Um, Your commercial sock yarn. Commercial sock yarn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start another Granny Strike blanket soon. So I did 64 stitches with a 2x2 two two rib. Mm -hmm. This isn't want to focus at that distance from the lens. <laughs> I did heel flap and gussets all in the same, and then I did an umbrella toe. Or a rounded toe. Rounded toe, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I did not make a match because I knew I was going to try to use all the yarn. I used all the yarn and then some. Yeah. Just not all of your yarn. No, but it's satisfying yeah, to it do is. all of that. Yeah. So I know if I would have done um, contrasting heels and toes, I think I would have had enough with the 50 grammer. Abby, stop. I know that for next time if I want to um, do 50 knit. gram. Yeah. You wanted a longer leg on this one. Yeah. Exactly. Rather than a shorty sock. I think I did about four and a half inches, including the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. So these are done. I had them on the needles a long time. If you're a regular podcast watcher, mm -hmm. these were probably around September last year. Yeah, you just kind of pick those up whenever you felt like doing yeah. These weren't a high priority. No. no. Okay, what else have you finished? I finished my pillow. Yay! Okay, so this is side one with the white Battenberg squares, and these were little minis that I got from Anna Knitter for a... And the Battenberg squares are crocheted. And then here's the back side. And that's all so colorful. I had a pillow form in my closet, mm -hmm. and I took fabric and just sewed a little... just a square and covered the pillowcase with quilting cotton quilting cotton and then I decided I do not enjoy doing these out of fingering weight yarn with a 2.25 millimeter crochet hook so I joined all the white ones with the colorful ones and I just I had enough mm -hmm. of the colorful ones for a whole back so I just went and joined them together together and then made a reversible pillow that is different on both sides. On both sides, so I can mm -hmm. enjoy the colorful side, or I can enjoy something that's a little more patterned. And patterned. So, and I just um, single crocheted the two sides together all mm -hmm. the way around, and to it looks nice. Off. So yeah, I did use I believe gray yarn to join these, while rather than white yarn. Here I used the white yarn to, to join. do with the joining. Yeah. So I am really excited to have this project finished. So this is what I'm going to use to start my granny stripe blanket is the minis I have left over of, of these. 
Charlie decided to lay on my um, blanket, my hand knit blanket, and he looks Cute. like the cat that had the cream. He's just so happy. <laughs> His tail is just so wagging so, so fast. That's why I was holding my uh, phone up. I was snapping a picture. You have to pop a picture in here yeah. of him. He's so, so happy we said his name and he's so happy. Yeah. So this was not in my bullet journal. It was not a priority. It was just something I kind of worked on as I had time. So now it can go in my bedroom and be used. Okie dokie. I finished <laughs> another pair of socks. These are The Road Goes Ever On. And they are cabled and really pretty. I was on the second one and I had only done three rows of the ribbing. I have my little my little ghost right there and then a little coffee cup. You don't care what season it is, you just pick a charm and use it. It was a flat one that was light and I could put it there <laughs> without it snagging, so um, I want to use my Tulip Progress Keeper mm. this time of year though. Yeah. So. I finished quite a bit of this because it was basically just the three rows that had been done. Used opal for the heel and she goes down. And they are a German toe. The pattern, like I said, is the road goes ever on, which is in your Etsy My store. My Etsy store, which will be linked below. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it, but I I know lately on my opal socks I've been having a ply snag. I don't know if it's the way we stored it or if it's the supplier we got it from, but I've been having a few extra ends to weave in on my heels lately. Hmm. So it's just that ball, that particular one. It might be. This is the stocking net side of the sock and the colorway is down in the meadow, which is a in your shop. Self striping colorway in my shop. Yep which will be linked below. So Nidal Fibers yarn. And those are all the knitting items that I finished. Okay. So last time you saw these, these are my swirl socks. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a sock set Rachel had gifted to me. It is her Who Spiked the Eggnog colorway. Mm -hmm. That was the first sample I did for my um, swirl sock pattern. Yep. This is the second sample. Yep, which looks really so. good. So you can see the nice spiral, and that blue is so pretty with this sagey color. Oh, I just love this color. This reminds mm -hmm. me of a Monet painting. Mm -hmm. It, it really just does. is gorgeous. I wanted to show what this sock pattern would look like on a variegated or light tonal versus the self-striping yeah. so that you could see and I think when you purchase socks that you can knit it on different types of yarn. I think there's a big difference because in the camera you're definitely picking up the stripes right? with the self-striping and with this you're definitely picking up the texture. The texture. So. so it's interesting how that works. So for this sample I used Amanda Hope Yarns. I'll get the tag out. I'll help if I do that. I think that's focused. Yep. And all I had left, because I had a 50 gram skein and then Rachel mm -hmm. gifted me the 20 gram skein to go with it. And I bought this at Houston Fiber Fest last year. And it's an 8515 merino nylon. So all I had left was... A tiny little bit. I separated the, the skein into two little balls. Mm -hmm. And then here's what I had left of the mini skein. All of this is only 4.2 grams. So you really got, so I got everything used up, basically. But to me, it's not worth it to store 4.2 grams. Yeah. So I am just tickle pink. I got the socks done. Or the yeah. This is the one you'll see on the cover photo of the pattern. This is the newest one that was released the beginning of, of April. Awesome. Now, I don't know whether or not I will be getting another pattern released the beginning of May, mm -hmm. just because my knitting time has slowed down. I have to have it tech edited, and that takes some time. So, we'll say... You have new ones on the new, needles. I have, new one, I have two designs on the needles, so those will be, mm -hmm. those will be coming in the future. Yep. 
Which is awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to slip this over here. Okay. Okay, and that is all that I have. It is all stitched together. What else do you have? I have some spinning. So Yay! If you were here a couple Christmases ago, you know I got fiber. <laughs> and it took me a to long laugh. time. So this is a really pretty two-ply. It is gorgeous. My plan was to knit or er, to spin a three ply. So this was only one third of a four ounce braid. And I really love it, but it's gorgeous. I was not interested in Turkish spinning, so drop spinning. That's very long. It's a very long yeah. process. Drop spinning a whole nother Oops. two um, portions of the braid. So this is my Turkish spindle, and it is free, and it's going to stay free for a while <laughs> because it took so long. Every time I try doing drop spindling, it takes a really it, long time. It did time. take you two years to do that. It is, it is really soothing, but I don't find it that I pick it up consistently, and it makes my hands ache. Do the tag? I. It'll have yeah. the bag. It's Banshee Fiber Art Studio Polework Silk. You do. You do have a card in here. And this is oh, a compacted don't. little braid. I have two of these. So it'll become a two-ply again. I have to show them this. Just in a little while and probably with a wheel. This is her itty-bitty Turkish spindle that's 3D printed. Yeah, turtle works or something like that. I can't remember. Turtle made. Yeah. Isn't that tiny? So this is the fiber I have left and I will probably spin it on your wheel at some point. Just not right now because I've worked with a lot of the pink. Yeah. But it's so pretty. I have about 300 yards of a very light fingering. What are your plans with it? What I want it? to get a complementary color Mm -hmm. that is commercially spun to go with it and probably knit some fingerless mitts. Ooh, pretty. So, I pretty. wanted to make sure that I showed what the fiber looked like and then what my spinning turned out. That's so pretty. Sorry for the crinkle. I have a picture I'll try to pop in where I show it for wraps per inch, just in case anybody's interested in seeing that. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna oh, cool. set that over there. Right there. Okay, now on to stitch by stitch, what we're currently yep. stitching on. I have one planting seed sock done. I should hold on to my, my uh, sock blocker. Hey, hey, and baseball's back. Look at the baseball blockers. Yeah. We have been enjoying watching baseball. Mm -hmm. So this is my planting seed pattern. And it is in the Puffins of Fair Isle colorway. And Rachel dyed a beautiful coral complementary color for me. Mm -hmm. And I am on the gusset decreases of the pattern. So I'm continuing the pattern on the front while I work the gusset decreases. And this is how I do it. I put a little stitch marker, a little um, coated O-ring in the center of my heel and I do my decreases. So that way you can count half of it instead of all of it. Yeah. It's kind of like needle one, needle two, needle three, but everything is on two needles on Magic Leap. Yeah, that little marker just gives you a visual cue. Yeah. Yep. And I'm knitting them on a US 1 2.25 Chagu lace. Yes. Awesome. So, and they are being housed in my Carla Knits bag that I love so much. Okay. Awesome. What else do you have, Miss I have in a bag that we've made, yes. and I feel like it fits the colors pretty well. Yes, I have my second Seguero cacti, cacti sock. This is a self-striping that I have dyed. It's available in my shop, and I put an opal green heel in, which I think looks really good. So it's just part of our like solid that. stash. Yeah. We have a big and basket of solids. The first one, I was right here on the leg last time we podcasted, so I knit a few 
more rows and then mm -hmm. I started the heel and went down to the toe. Yeah. This is a rounded toe as well. Looks a little wonky on this sock because it's not on a blocker. Yeah. But I figured I would show the one I'm currently working on and I don't know how well the color is looking um, with the lights we have set up but it has I'm really sure good pictures good. on the listing and sometimes I just worry that these lighter colors get lost on camera. Yeah. But I'm really close to getting it done. I just have another day or two of knitting and then I think these will be off my needles. And it's the only pair of socks I currently have on needles. my needles. Wool needle thread bag is a new sock design. I'm only going to show you the yarn. I am using this really bright pink opal yarn. Mm -hmm. And it is... Sweet Kiss, color 11266, this is the label. It is a fun yarn. And here's what it looks like if you knit it up without a pattern. I am putting a pattern on this one. This is the first time I'm designing using opal, so I'm a little nervous about whether or not the design will shine with it. Mm -hmm. I think it will. However, I don't want to spoil anything until I'm ready to share. So yeah. all you get to see right now is the yarn. It's looking nice. I like seeing so, that the brighter color knit up. I My mother had the most beautiful tulips along the side of her house. And mm -hmm. people in our little town would drive by every spring just to see her row of red tulips. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, this just sparked interest in me um, to knit yeah. something that was bright and cheerful. Mm -hmm. So Always good to have something that's bringing you joy on your needles. That's design number one. So I'm working on I'm trying to get that done. Okay, so... What else you got, Rachel? I'm going to share the bag with acquisitions. Okay. And I'm going to show my project right now. It is the... Girlfriends pattern and here is the designer's name. It can be bought off Ravelry, I believe. I bought it a long time ago. And it is a cardigan, clearly, that I am knitting with Kid Mohair Silk. It's like a raspberry color mm -hmm. in color number 17. And Barn Door Heather and Stroll Tweed. So as you can tell, I like the burgundy. This is an old, yeah. old campsite cardigan I'm wearing right now. It's What's my only burgundy. Was this yarn? This yarn was Patton's classic worsted. It was, yeah. Um, so which has gotten expensive. Yeah, it has. So I am working on my leftovers from my sleeves. This is about 18 grams left in this ball. And my sweater looks like a sweater. It's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. So I have two completed sleeves. Yay. And the body. So it is drop shoulder and it has an applied I cord edging. So you don't have to go back and do a collar band. And it's squishy garter. So yeah. I probably have Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine more inches to knit, and then it'll be finished. And garter's just so easy and fast. It is easy and fast, and the sleeves have to be knit one round purl, one round knit to get that garter texture. But the body, it's just knitting across. Now, you did your sleeves first? I did 100 grams of my yarn into the body, okay. so that brought me... You look. Brought me to here. Right so here. So below the below the sleeves. Below the sleeves. And then why did you go to the sleeves? Because I don't have a lot of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Which I think we talked about on the last episode. Yeah. And you want to make sure you had enough for sleeves, and then you just yeah. make the body with the rest of the yarn. So that I can use up all the yarn. Okay. Gotcha. Um, gotcha, gotcha. So, I'm enjoying it. It's definitely something I want to wear. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I've tried it on multiple times. 
this, you know, sleeve length and yeah. all of that, and I'm really excited for it. Yay. I don't think I'll have more mohair sweaters in the future. Really? Just because it's really nice in this one, but I really do enjoy knitting with just plain, Yarn. like a worsted or a woolen spun. Yeah. Instead of... I'm interested to see how you're going to like wearing it. fuzz. Yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping it'll be nice. It's not as high up in the shoulder, or it's not as high up in my armpit, because now that I've got the body weight, it's helping pull it down a bit, and also the sleeves, it's sitting where it should on my shoulders, mm -hmm. instead of trying to scrunch up. Okay. So I'm liking gotcha. the fit of it. And... Gotcha. I did make some modifications, but I think I talked about them in other episodes, and if not, I will definitely revisit those when I finish it. I'll mention all of so those So hopefully then. this will be a finished object next episode, in May. I'm hoping, but we'll see how much energy <laughs> I have. I'm hoping it'll be finished. Yeah. Just have to stay focused. Okay. I have a new bag. And this is a beautiful little sock bag that I got from Susan from Delightful Works. And I absolutely love her bags. This is just the perfect sock size bag. And also, she's just a wonderful seamstress. So, we live close to Galveston. So you like I wanted, the sea theme? I like the sea theme. I've been eyeing this one for quite a while. This also has a new design mm -hmm. in it. And I am using the Knit T Natty Yarn yep. by Arkansas Yarn, Yarn Company. The T in that word is, is emphasized because it's like Here, tea you drink. The, I'll show the card. And also, I'm not going to show you the design. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so you being. Have two design works in progress. I'm being a um, stickler and not showing designs, but I want them to be a surprise. Yeah. Where is my tag? Okay, it's this. You can definitely read the font. You definitely can. It's and nice like and I bold. said, Arkansas Yarn Company. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this one is a nice four row repeat. A very simple little basic texture to make the yarn shine. Are you going to knit any of these um, designs as shorty socks right now, or are they all mm -hmm. going to be they're gonna be normal length? They're going to be normal length socks. Okay. So, um, they may take me a while to get done and on and up, tech edited and up, but mm -hmm. I just want to kind of keep it a surprise. Yeah. So, that's being housed in this one. Awesome. Hopefully, our recording stops, so hopefully Rachel can piece this together somehow. Yep. In my Ranger's bag that we sewed, mm -hmm. I have fabric to do more, so I want to do some more. Yeah, without the waxed canvas bottom. I am using Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. And it is in the Dove colorway, so it is just a really pretty soft gray. There's a story behind this. I have tried several corner-to-corner -corner crochet dishcloths that... I get the first part of the increases done, and when I go to do the decrease side, I do something wonky or can't figure it out, can't wrap my head around it. Even though I watch YouTube videos, I have ripped this thing out three or four times. So I decided... And they're a special type of crochet stitch. It's it's the... the Moss first, stitch or something? No, it's the lemon peel corner to corner stitch. Um, dishcloth. Okay. I've watched several different videos on it. It's a beautiful pattern. I highly recommend it if you're good at crocheting. However, for me, the decreases, I just can't get them right. I got frustrated. So I decided to just do a mitered square. Um, and that looks so big, it looks like it's more like a hand towel. Well, when you get it... Yeah, I cast on 81 stitches with a size 8. Okay. Which is a, let me see, I can read it. They give you bifocals, but then you can't read the bi, uh, 5 millimeter. Okay. Now I understand why your dad always has to do that, take off his glasses to read that. It helps. So I'm just doing corner to corner. I know I said I was not going to buy more 
dishcloth cotton. And you didn't, right? Yes, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. I bought three skeins. Okay. You have all of it here at the house, though. I wanted to knit something very special for my sister, mm -hmm. and her favorite color is lavender and purple. And mm -hmm. her bathroom is lavender, purple, and gray. Mm -hmm. So I want to knit as much as I can with this gray, and then the, do the lavender, and then the purple, and then whatever I have left, I'm going to do a stripe one. Okay. Color block color it. Color block it. Or color, just change the stripes up. Okay. So, this has been a joy with the, I'm just using my Haya Haya interchangeables. Mm -hmm. And it has been fun to do something on a thicker needle that is just very mindless. So, yay, I know that's so exciting, but I did go through all my dishcloth cotton. Yeah. And I have a ton of it. And I wasn't going to buy any more, but I did not have anything that would fit her bathroom. Okay. So. Anyway, okay. So what else do you have? I cast on another well cardigan sweater, and it is the Eve cardigan by Petite Knit, and it is an oversized, and it's got it's more like a tailored neat. fit on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it properly, so I'm going to just let my knitting speak for itself as you see the construction. <laughs> I am knitting the first size in the pattern and I am using US 6. I knit a swatch and blocked it. The US 5 needles were down here. US 6 needles were up here which doesn't have that much of a difference but there's a little more drape to the size 6. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I went with that since stitch gauge was technically being met. And it is Lion Brand's Fisherman wool, which I got three skins of these for my birthday as a gift, which was this past week. Yep, so it is gosh, what color? It's the oatmeal, yes, yes, oatmeal colorway, oatmeal colorway. And I worked on all of this yesterday. So Yay. I have a little teacup marker that's my back back with these nice shoulder design. pieces, shoulder pieces, design element, design element, and yeah. it's really nice construction. I've enjoyed having to think and build the sections of it because I sat to knit on the Seguero socks later that evening and I'm just like, I honestly feel slightly bored. <laughs> Sock knitting is not boring, I love it, but Compared to this well, and how, vanilla socks. how excited, yeah, playing yeah. vanilla socks, it was a little boring because yeah. I was really engaged in the Eve cardigan. You were. And you like petite knit stuff. I do like her patterns. There's yeah. not heavily textured or anything like that. None of the ones I've knit. Yeah. But this was really fun for the construction. And once I knit about 45 more rows or so, I'll be at a point where it's just stocking knit and then it'll be like a meditative one. Yeah. I'm not going to say boring because stocking that is not <laughs> boring. It's just I was craving that little bit of a challenge. So you were excited to get your birthday yarn. I was. I was very excited. But I was patient. I swatched. I blocked the swatch. And for the size I chose, I will have five inches of positive ease in the garment, assuming everything goes right. Mm-hmm. A pattern recommends 10 inches of positive ease. I didn't want to knit the second size into the pattern because I didn't want a full 10 inches. And on a small, so, I think on a small frame body, a cardigan that has that much positive ease yeah. looks in the picture, sloppy. No, in the picture that she's wearing, that Petite is wearing that I just showed, she has 10 inches and it looks good on her and I think she's a slimmer frame than me. But I just don't like that look on myself. Yeah. So you like things a little more fitted. Yes. And yeah. I am so happy to have this done for the initial setup. Yeah. Because now I have in the pattern, I put a big posty note and I marked down the v-neck shaping and the raglan shaping and all of that. Yeah. So did now, you hear that Joanne's filed bankruptcy? I think you mentioned this last episode. 
when you mm. asked if Hobby Lobby has a sale regularly, I think you mentioned mm. the Joanne's I don't thing. think I did. I think I found out after that. Okay. But they are going to remain open and sell online and in stores. They're just... I listened to a podcast. They're trying she, to consolidate debt. Yes, they're trying to consolidate debt. They mm -hmm. are privately... No, they're publicly owned. They used to be privately owned. Okay. Michael's used to be publicly owned. Now they're private owned. So, okay. um, yeah. Well, Don't I'm, worry, they're not going away. They just okay. are um, consolidating debt and will stay open. So. Okay, so I have a, another project and it is not knitting. It is spinning. Yay. So I asked to borrow your wheel and I started spinning this cheviot. That's so pretty. So it is a non-superwash wool and it's got about three distinct colors that I'm breaking it into. So we have white, a blue-gray steel, and the first chunk I spun was primarily pink. This one's got pink and orangey gold. Mm -hmm, like a sunset. Yeah, so that's the colors that I'm breaking it into are the pink gold, the blue, gray, and the cream. And so you're so, color managing your spin. Yes, I am sectioning out so that I spin all of one color onto the bobbin first. So this bobbin started with pink, moved into blue, gray, and then ended with white. And I'm going to do a three ply. So here is my little bit of braided. It is Banshee Fiber Arts again. It's four ounces. Mm -hmm. So on this one, I'll start with the blue, move on to the cream, and end with the pink gold. And then on the next one, the colors will shift again. So that way, when I do the three-ply, all three of those particular color groups should be represented throughout the skein. Throughout the ply. Yeah, throughout the ply and throughout the skein instead of being... Chunked up and... Chunked up and... I'm trying it for color management. And the goal is to knit hand spun socks. Oh, so, nice. So the Cheviot should be good for that. Now I have a um, Kromsky Prelude mm -hmm. Symphony, no, Kromsky oh. Prelude. Prelude, that's all. Yeah, spinning oh. wheel, single treadle. Mm -hmm. So this is the first completed bobbin. And I think I will have plenty of yardage for socks, but if I don't, I have a one ounce of Cheviot right here. And I could spin this up as a three ply and have heels, toes, and cuffs. Yeah. Ooh, that would be pretty. To work with it, because this is a non super wash. It honestly feels a little softer than the dyed. And I think that's just because the processing. The processing, it had one less step to be processed. Yeah. And this was ordered from Mohair and More, which is Local located, to us. located in Texas, but mm -hmm. I've only ever shopped online or at a small fiber event booth. Yeah. So I have that option if I need an extra ounce of fiber spun. Awesome. And I think How are you enjoying spinning on a wheel versus your tur turtle? It's tur going... Turkish spindle. It's going so much faster, so my little pink um, Polworth silk that I spun was the exact same amount of fiber as what's on this bobbin. The only difference is that one took me years, not exaggerating, it took me years to, take you to years. get it done because I wouldn't pick it up, I wouldn't stay consistent with it. Mm -hmm. And this, I think I started April 1st. Yeah. And it's yeah. April 8th, so it took me eight days to spin. Yeah, but you just spend a little bit every evening. About 20 minutes or less. Yeah. Well, some days I probably did a little more because it was a weekend and I was all done with work for that. Yeah. That week. Now, when you plied your little turtle from mm -hmm. your Turkish spindle, how did you ply that? Applied it from inside and outside, so we are talking about this fiber when right. it's on a I don't think you talked about that when you did it. I did not talk about the plying process. When you spin on a Turkish spindle, you end up with fiber wrapped around, 
in a specific over two under one of the crafts bars mm -hmm. and it creates what's called a turtle and when you take the the spindle out you slide everything apart you get left with a center pole um, ball of yarn right. and you can take the inside and outside of that and ply it on itself mm -hmm. which I did and when I get towards the end of my turtle it gets hollow on the inside and a little flimsy on the outside and it can get messy so I wrapped this is genius I wrapped the um, remaining amount of fiber around my a dice well no first I wrapped it around the ply yarn that was creating a new turtle on my spindle so the ply yarn was becoming its own center pull ball so I took the singles, wrapped them around the outside so that I could find the center point between those. And then I took it and I wrapped it around a dice so that it was all, all the unplied yarn was on the dice, not on the new center pole. And then I was able to ply from that without getting yarn barf. So that would be, yeah. And wrapping it around a dice, that's called a plying ball. Some people use foam balls or those little bouncy balls you can buy like at a gumball machine. Or ping pong ball. Or, yeah, it just depends. I think yeah. people aim for small, small, but I don't know. Or marble. Yeah, a marble kind of yeah. thing. I had a dice, so I used a dice. <laughs> and it worked pretty well. Yeah, I can't wait to see so, what you make with that. I think it's going to be yeah, beautiful. It is. This is my favorite finished item of this episode of yeah. mine. Yeah. Of yours, I think I like your pillow the best. Do you? I love your designs because I want to knit some of them. You knit all my but, designs. <laughs> yeah, I want to knit the swirl ones. But I think the Oh, you pillow, haven't done the swirl ones yet, mm -hmm, have you? I haven't. I want to pick out yarn for it. Yeah. But um, your pillow, because it's unique. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so... Okay, I have a... Sorry? You want to go on to acquisitions? I do. Okay. I have four. Okay, I have... Already talked about the yarn. The yarn, because that was your so, birthday present. I have one acquisition to talk about, so I'll let you go first. Okay, so I got this really, really cute little saguaro cacti. I'm going to let you hold it up. What's it say? Um, you can do anything. Let's see. You can survive anything. Oh, you can survive anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got it from In Sunshine and Shadow Shop, that's H-O-P-P-E, and that's in Denton, Texas. I found it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We have a family member who has um, been diagnosed with cancer, and so I just thought that this was the perfect little stitch marker to put on a project and remind me to pray for that person whenever I'm, I'm working on that project. Also, I got from Leap of Faith Yarn, this beautiful, beautiful colorway called Pastures of Peace. Mm -hmm. And it is this bright, cheery green that reminds me of all the trees budding out and a section of spe uh, speckles. And Christy was so sweet, she sent me these itty bitty little tiny stitch markers with beads mm -hmm. on them so I can use them for my sock knitting. And a sweet little so note. Cute. And I cannot wait to cast this on and possibly design with it. I want to mm -hmm. see how it knits up first before I decide on it. Because sometimes... Do you have any plain vanilla socks on the needles? I do not. That would be good for this, wouldn't it? It would be. I was just curious because... No, I don't. This is this is the only plain, plain knitting I have. mindless. This would be perfect for just... It would. I mean, it would be nice for designing, yeah, too, but yeah. you'd probably but start a cuff, and then you'd have an idea for a design. I would, yeah. And then you'd have three on the needles. Yeah. And then last year's North Texas Yarn Crawl, Arkansas mm -hmm. Yarn Company was at Juju Fibers in Fort Worth. I think it's Juju Knits. Juju Knits. Not Fibers. Juju Knits in Fort mm -hmm. Worth. And she did um, There's a B in my Texas Blue Bonnet. And I have been wanting this one for over a year. And they had it on their website. And so, and it's from Arkansas Yarn Company. And I had a 10% off discount code. Mm -hmm. So I decided 
I'm gonna treat myself. So I and got that's this on the one. High twist base, right? High twist, yes, or yummy high twist, mm -hmm. eighty-five fifteen. It only has 399 grams per 100 yards. Okay. And then I finally got my copy of the Sock Project book by Summerlee Knits. I had to wait for the second publishing mm -hmm. um, to get it on Amazon. So I got that. They are. I'm excited to just kind of mm -hmm. dig in. And I've been so busy with other things in designing that I just haven't had time to properly sit down and look through, look through it. Yeah. But I'm excited to have it. Okay, so I did a trade with Delightful Works. So Susan. here's her business card. Susan is so sweet. Yes, hopefully I'm holding it steady enough. And I got a bag. And this is holding my girlfriend's cardigan, which is the mohair burgundy one. And I love the print. And drawstring and then it's light pink on the bottom. So pretty. And I got the little clip to go on the inside, which has been helpful for holding some extra stitch markers. Yes. Which has been nice. I love the quality of her bags and the prints yeah. she chooses. And it's pink with polka dots on the inside. Swiss dot. Yes. That's what we used to call it when I was a kid, Swiss dot fabric. Hmm. I wonder what the history of naming fabrics are. I don't know. Because I know there's hound tooth and other, like... Yeah. Patterns. Interesting. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. It's working really well. Um, I have been a little like when I took it in the car with me because we went to Washington on the Brazos to look at blue bonnets. So much And fun. I was like, oh, I'd rather leave this in my lap than on the floor because <laughs> it's the light pink and I don't want to get yeah. it dirty. Yeah. Which well, tells my... you I really like the bag because I wanted to keep it near me. Yes. Yeah, well, so... do you think we should get on with what maybe some people might be waiting, waiting for? for? <laughs> so here is our 100th giveaway. We have a drawstring bag. So it's a fun print with bright orange knitting on the inside. Yarn balls. Yarn ball kind of swirly print. We have a Notion tin. Mm -hmm. So it's got a night owl fiber sticker on it. We have a skein of yarn. This is New Year's Dance Off. From and the Friends Collection. Yep, so it's got a nice variety of color. And then we have an opal mini to go with it. So you have a heel toe. And I suppose cuff if you manage your 20 grams well. Um, I would right. say if you wear a medium sized sock, mm -hmm. 15 rows of ribbing, Heel flap and gusset and a wedge toe, you can mm -hmm. squeak out all of that. But so. you can definitely get heels and toes. So this is the giveaway. Yay. And if you want to enter, comment, please be subscribed. Comment below. And the question is, how much time do you spend crafting each day? Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to put how much time you actually craft, say how much time you'd like to, to craft. craft. And use the word craft mm -hmm. because that's the word we will put in for mm -hmm. um, to um, filter, the, filter comments. the comments. So if yeah. you want to be entered for the giveaway, yep. that is what we will do. So that is our giveaway. We are so excited to be at 100 episodes. Next yes. time we'll be at 101. We will. And that and should be beginning of May. Beginning of May. We've been trying to go exactly four weeks. Mm -hmm. but I've, I write it down. Yeah. I can at least know to gather my things in time. Yeah. Because I tend to have things scattered. That'll be after the North Texas Yarn Crawl, which we yes. will be at. Uh huh. Night Off Fibers will be at McKinney, so that's me. You will be there. And, I will. Mm -hmm. Um. All of your patterns are on one of my yarns, <laughs> so we will. You get to see the patterns in person if you want, mm -hmm. um, and see what they look like in person. Yeah, and it will. So this Saturday, Sunday. Yep, it'll be a very quick trip, but yes. we will see you after we get back from that, and hopefully have some video to show you of downtown McKinney because I don't think we've ever done that. We've showed you the inside of the no. knitting store. I have a box full of yarn in front of me for the crawl <laughs> and there's going to be 12 new colorways well new oh, 
Did you, you bring in your with? new one? I did. I have a cast on. Okay. That I will be working on. This is one of the new colorways. So by the time we get up there, I think it's going to be nine colorways that nobody's seen before. Mm -hmm. This is Oceanfront Property in Arizona. So it has two shades of brown, a shade of sand, and two shades of blue. And if you enjoy country music, you might recognize the George Strait song, Oceanfront Property. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun song, and that's what the yarn is named after. So if you like country music, look up the song, because mm -hmm. I will be knitting this that's up. That's what I will, it was inspired by. I will put a picture on the screen of the stripe sequence, because I wrapped the repeat around a card, like I do for my photos, because I didn't get a cuff knit. And it got messed up because I left it on the kitchen table, and it's now in a little ball <laughs> instead of wrapped around the card. So, picture inserted. Yeah. And I, it happens. I hope everybody has a wonderful month of crafting ahead of them. And I had no clue I would be spinning this past month. So, That's exciting, it'll be though. interesting to see what what we do within the next four weeks, because clearly yeah. anything can happen. True. Very true. And, um, yeah, yeah, have a great day or night or whatever time of day you're watching this. Yeah. And we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.